Well, after three agonising years of negotiations, Michel Barnier gets Boris Johnson to sign us up to a brand new treaty, which guarantees three more years of agonising negotiations and, frankly, reduces the United Kingdom to the status of a colony of the European Union. And why is Boris doing it? He's doing it because he doesn't want extension. He's doing it because he knows that extension damages the Conservative Party in the polls. So he wants to bounce us in to this new treaty before we wake up. It's the same story every time. It's about the Tory party, not about the country. And what we need is to build a leave alliance of those across the political spectrum to fight and win the next general election. The only way we can leave this place is with a clean break Brexit. Yeah. I would like to think, like Mr Juncker, that this is my last speech here in 20 years, but somehow I've got the feeling... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd love it to be. Would you let him finish? You'd love his it to be. Colleagues, but I have please. a feeling we'll be back in November. Yeah. I'm really sorry, but we missed the very end of Mr. Farage's last speech because you were all cheering. MPs in my parliament are stopping a deal which is mandated by the people, a no deal which is mandated by the people and a general election. Parliament does not have a democratic mandate for a second referendum or cancelling Brexit. And yet, they are amending their way to it. Control has been stolen from my people. But we do not give up. Despite it all, the majority of Brits still wouldn't want to change the Brexit result. So I would like to celebrate millions of voters who stood up for what they believed in in 2016 and still have the courage not to give up. They show the best of British through their perseverance in the face of adversity. You may have tried to wear us down, dampened our spirits through the emotional roller coaster of our negotiations, but my belief in them is unwavering and resolute. They will be heard. Would you accept a blue card request from Madame Grappini? Always like a debate. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Grappini. Dear, co uh, dear colleague, in your report, you provided us with information saying a majority of citizens in the UK did not want to change the results of the referendum. Uh, can I just ask uh, where you got that one, where you got that? It's not something I had heard about, and I had been seeing the protests in the street, which suggests um, differently. I would like to mention the 54% Comrades poll that was released last week. I'd also like to mention the 17.4 million people who shall not be forgotten in their vote in 2016 that still remain a majority. Yeah. <laughs> so, again... Ms. Fowarden would also like to ask you a question. I'd just like to remind you that your slogan in 2016 was take back control, and that's what our Parliament's doing. Isn't that what you wanted? The, the, in my country, the people are sovereign. I'm not sure too much about this Parliament, but in my country, people make the laws. I want the people to decide. And our slogan didn't exist in 2016. The Brexit Party is very new. Yeah. Could yeah. we now... For one and a half minutes, Madame Giori. You've got two. <laughs> oh, Very good. They can't lose one. Brilliant. Lucy. Yeah, be there. Best part of the heart. What did you say? More enjoy. First of all, I want to say to Mr. Van Orden that uh, I'm honoured that you compared me with Mr. Berko. Uh, it's in any way better than to be compared with Ries Mock, huh? uh, because. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ber Berko's ties are more colourful. I like them more than those of, uh, uh, of Mr. Rees-Mogg. So that's first of all. Dear colleagues, uh, we need to use the time uh, between now and the constant vote uh, to solve the last problems uh, that still exist today uh, with uh, the rights of the EU citizens that are living in uh, the UK. And there are still a number of problems to be solved. 
there is the vulnerable citizens two hundred zero of them who are in need of assistance uh, there is uh, those who will miss the deadline and there uh, one of the members of the uk government has said oh we're going to do deportation well i can tell you this problem needs to be solved in all clarity before that there is no deportation of these people three there is the difference there is a difference between a settled status and, and pre-settled status uh, what is, in my opinion, not always clear why people are in pre-settled status and not in, in the settled status with, with full rights. And there is the independent monitoring authority. It's not clear in the withdrawal bill how independent the independent monitoring authority will be. And we have to be sure that it is a real independent monitoring authority. So before the Hess House will give consent, I want to see this problem solved, uh, dear colleagues. We don't want that the EU citizens become victims in another wind rust scandal in Britain. That cannot happen. Women will suffer first. People of colour will endure the worst consequences. And those with the least now will have even less. That's why we need a people's vote so that people can have a final choice between this specific deal and remain. I think we have two blue cards. Well, we won't have four blue cards, that's for sure. Um, we might take two. So the first one, if you accept, madam, you don't have to, but it's your choice. Do you accept the blue cards? Yes. Mr. Habib. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ms. Phillips describes the reduction in standards which would ensue in the event of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union. Does she have no belief, self-confidence and understanding of the great British values that we have instilled across the globe for the betterment of mankind and indeed the freedom of the continent in which we now sit? Yeah. 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 Could we hear the answer, please? Madam Chair, I do not understand why those people there are so afraid of democracy and putting back to the people something specific that they can vote on will, will not affect just their futures, but the whole of a continent. Thank you. I might actually run a clapometer on the next question. That comes from Mr Foreman. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm taking two, not four. Um, you have to ask the lady. Okay, I, I do apologise, Mr. Foreman, but we cannot have your question. Well, you've already accepted my question. Yeah, I did, but I neglected to ask the um, speaker, would she answer? She said no. So we will move on with the next speaker on my list. I think the British public want and deserve a right to reconsider this disastrous decision for our country. Uh, Mr. Corbett, there are rather two blue card requests. Uh, I will only take one because I've been informed we have 20 people on the catch the eye. So do you want to accept a question from Mr. Dobney? I hope I've said that right. We should. Mr. Dobney. Yes. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Corbett um, how, what would he say to 5 million Labour voters in 60% of seat, Labour seats who voted to leave the European Union? How could you explain to them that you have not betrayed their vote by your party demanding they are forced to vote again in a second referendum? You should be ashamed of your party. Most Labour voters, even in Leave seats, voted Remain at the time of the referendum. That is now even more the case because 
Labour Leave voters have now seen that Brexit is a right-wing neoliberal project driven by the right wing of the Tory party that will harm workplace rights, that will harm their economy, that will cost jobs, that will do no good whatsoever to Britain. And that's why the Labour Party has rightly taken the position that any Brexit outcome now should go back to the public to decide. Thank you.